soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. Well, you've never seen something quite like this before. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to a brand new strategy game DLC on the Western Front for a little game known as Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront. This is the Liberation DLC that is coming soon to Steam and is an expansion upon an expansion of a game that is quite, quite good. Call to Arms, of course, taking place in modern military times, but the Ostfront... Uh, Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront, that is, takes place, of course, mostly on the Eastern Front, hence the name, with the Soviets and the Germans fighting. Well, now we have ourselves the Soviets out of the picture, and the Americans are moving in for some liberation, brother. The liberation of France, to be honest. Uh, this is a showcase mission, which we're going to pause here and take a look around, because we have 10 minutes until American forces arrive. And, of course, we're defending as the Germans, elements of, I believe, the uh, Folsom Jaeger, 3rd Folsom Jaeger Division, yeah, right there on the bottom of the screen. Now, the developers have given me the go-ahead to showcase two missions from this upcoming DLC that are solo missions, allowing you to play as the Germans during the D-Day invasions all the way to the defense and the watch on the Rhine. But there is a main story campaign for the Americans that takes place all the way from D-Day all the way till I could only imagine, maybe also... Uh, the Watch on the Rhine as well. So we'll be able to play as tons of American forces for the very first time in Metal War Assault Squad 2. We've played the Americans plenty of times. And for this DLC, the Liberation DLC, they've now finally re-recorded a lot of voice acting, which was kind of getting repetitive for the Americans. In fact, a lot of the mods for uh, Call to Arms that have already brought in the American forces basically reutilized a lot of those assets. And so now we get a lot of beautifully handcrafted... I mean, just look at this. This half-track alone shows you what the quality of some of the things like the Shermans and whatnot will be. I'll put up a trailer before this video just so you can see what the American forces will mostly look like, and this will be out later in the week. So let's go ahead and get started. Then we know the Americans will be arriving from the north. We'll need to defend against uh, paratroopers and uh, other army units and whatnot that have made it to St. Lowe as we're playing the defense of St. Lowe and have to hold this entire road through the village all the way down to the west. So we'll have to defend these crossroads and whatnot. A lot of these forces here are out of our control. Anything indicated in green, a lot of these forces are just allied forces. And if you haven't seen this game before, it's amazing. You can actually take first and third person control of vehicles and units. So that way you can kind of get into the fight yourself. So if you'd like to at any time, you can go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and slow down time here so we get a little bit of time to set up so I can showcase some of these things. So yeah, a brand new, completely new DLC, a brand new front that we've never seen before in this game, but of course returning from many other popular games such as Metal War Assault Squad 2 and on par with the uh, detail of the Rob's Realism mod as well. Now I've seen some units that we haven't seen on the Eastern Front before in some of these other missions and some you know remixes. The Germans, of course, making a lot of uh, truck-mounted guns and other things like that. So there's quite a few different little mishmash and... Uh, you know, haphazardly assembled anti-tank weapons and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, seems pretty damn cool so far. I'm not going to complain about getting some early access to that. 
So we've got ourselves something I haven't seen before, too. Uh, we have ourselves an infantry cart next to a mortar here. I think we have seen the 12 centimeter before, but this will be uh, devastating against American troops when they arrive. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. We have ourselves some vehicle crew here. They would be perfect for that vehicle there. We have ourselves a lot of engineers, too, and also artillery men, the engineers being here. The artillery men, perfect for the mortars, the AT guns, and uh, even machine guns as well, just to put somebody with a rifle onto a piece of equipment. Now, the uh, commander here is basically telling us we're very low on AT, so make every shot count, and uh, be careful if and when you're firing your Panzerfaust, which a lot of our troops do have. So we're lucky with that, but we don't have a lot of, um, oh, obviously no tanks. And an interesting thing about this DLC, too, that we've seen before, there's some other great DLCs for this one, one called Scorched Earth, which brings a lot more missions, um, basically after Barbarossa, and kind of more earlier war on the Eastern Front, uh, that has a lot of great vehicles and maps and things for multiplayer and for conquest, and also the uh, Winter War for the uh, Finnish, which adds a lot of uh, Finnish and Soviet equipment and whatnot for the Continuation War, the Lapland War, and... Um, yeah, all, all the different uh, wars that Finland fought between, and even a conquest mode uh, that you can play. And this will be the same, too, where you, then you can play against uh, the uh, Americans as the Germans, if you'd want to, and retake uh, the, the areas of Normandy or whatnot. All right, let's go ahead and get some stuff down here. We're going to get right into the defense. And uh, basically, we may receive some reinforcements before the Americans come. We have about 10 minutes to set up our defense. And uh, I basically want to show you how to do this right. Uh, we're going to take uh, as many elevated positions as we can. We're going to try to uh, dig in around any of the high ground with open area. Looks like we've already got a couple of trenches here dug out. Nothing too great so far, but we certainly don't want the Americans to uh, come down that road like a cannonball on fire. So we're going to try to build as much as we can uh, to try to slow them down, uh, but know that they'll probably easily get through. Ooh, we can actually dig out like little bunkers or whatnot for the uh, tanks, and so we can... Uh, basically take a half track and turn it into a fortified position almost like a bunker uh, for any sort of a tank that we might get i doubt that we're going to see any vehicles here but i think our time might be better spent just trying to um, dig and build trenches and other fortifications this one might be able to fire over these troops heads who will probably easily die but we can use this machine gun here to scoot it over to that position so yeah when you start these battles i would highly recommend for anybody anybody at all even if you're a pro to just put it down to like a slower uh, speed because this gives you the most amount of time to especially when playing for the first time like we are yeah i haven't uh, tried this mission at all yet aside from just taking a peek what was here you never know where the enemy is going to approach from so you know they say here that the enemy will approach from the north but i don't know if they're going to immediately have shermans i don't know if they're going to have uh you know like a ton of infantry right at the start or if it'll be light probing and then eventually scouts and heavier infantry and our main goal here is to try to defend the church too it's not just the uh, roadway but it is but also uh, around the uh, uh, the defensive line, which is the church, and then the road that goes westward. So we've got quite a bit of work to do, and uh, there's some other units here, um, abandoned vehicles, which we can see on the mini-map here with the white triangle, and that basically indicates that it's something that we can interact with. Like, for example, that white triangle there is for the supplies that is for the mortar, and we certainly don't want to move that because the longer that mortar fires, the better it will be for us. There's also a pack 40 over on this side, too. And again, as I mentioned, when you start the battle, you can actually choose a kind of different um, mix-ups of the battle. So there is some replayability here. In other words, you can choose a regular offensive, defensive, or all-round forces that gives you different vehicles and different units for each of the battles. So even though we're playing as the third Falsamager unit, we might be able to put the game on hard, for example, on irregular and kind of make it so that way it's uh, much more unusual to defend. Units that you normally wouldn't see uh, in these types of, you know, more like a mag, like a ragtag kind of group of just made up uh, units that are just kind of uh, scrambled together, essentially. And so it kind of makes it interesting. Uh, defensive gives you more anti-tank weapons, more machine guns, more emplacements. And since we're defending, well, it just seems like a good idea. So, yeah, we're going to put a uh, bunker there. That should cover this side of the road. We're going to put a, uh, and by bunker, I just mean large trench over on this side too. Some of the Finnish DLC does allow you to build more uh, dedicated structures and much more permanent structures and pillboxes and things like that, but I don't see a lot of that for these uh, Germans here so far. I'm trying to quickly check and see what each of these uh, soldiers are carrying too. And we don't all want all of our soldiers on the front line. There could be artillery, mortars, tanks, and or we'll take losses, and so it's a good idea to just try to slowly um, move everything to where it needs to go when the battle is ongoing. So if we 
you know, take a huge loss on the left flank, we can go ahead and do something like that. It looks like we actually are getting reinforcements. I don't, this, oh, we have a few green soldiers coming in from the uh, back lines here. So we're getting quote unquote reinforcements, I guess, or troops that were just scouting and might report some bad news for us, like they were surrounded. Let's go ahead and find that pack 40 then, which should be around here somewhere. I believe it might be in this building. Germans have a lot of clever places to hide these pack 40s and so even when it's on my side, I can't even find it. There's that mortar that we're going to be occupying here in just a quick second. Ah, there's the pack 40 here. Yeah, like on this little crossroad, like a little farm road that kind of goes out into nowhere. That's going to be hard to defend that pack 40. It's out in the middle of nowhere, so it could easily be swarmed by infantry, but also is likely a place where tanks could attack. Now, generally, the developers are pretty nice when it comes to, you know, like first missions and stuff. They have basically time after time, I've seen them put tank spawn where like a flak 88 is up on a hill. They want to see you enjoy some huge explosions. So if they put a flak 88 up on a hill, then there's probably no reason to actually move that because that's going to be a huge area where the enemy will approach from and might be a, a very perfect position for, uh, you know, dealing with uh, enemy uh, in reinforcements and or a crossroad that the enemy may try to capture. I think I saw a sniper here. I was trying to put him up in the up in the uh, tower there. Uh, looks like we have some medics here. Great. We'll put some of them in the in the rear. And we're just going to mix troops all around and just wait for the Americans. We really don't have a lot of uh, supply here um, and or a lot of room here to build a defense. I mean, we're kind of wedged up against the edge of the map and uh, the giant church there. So we're going to have to try to see if we can build some more defenses to slow the enemy down. Perhaps around here we could build some, although I want to defend the church a little bit more. I feel like that's going to be their main objective. So we can try to build a, where's that AT gun again here? We could build a, maybe a little trench here, and that'll try to, and the great thing about the trenches too is they're at like, a, I don't know, a 10 or a 15, 5, 10, 15 degree angle where you can basically fire slightly to the left and right of it so it's not a straight, uh, French. So even if a mortar round lands on one end of it, there is a chance that troops will also survive too, unlike the trenches of Men of War that were fairly uh, straight. And uh, though they were quite deep trenches too, these are a little more shallow, which is good because it allows you to uh, build it pretty much anywhere. And the troops oftentimes would have trouble actually, um, you know, shooting out of those. So let's go ahead and put down some uh, hedgehogs here. We're going to put down a few of these uh, anti-tank traps. See if we can stop American tanks or APCs or whatever from getting through there. Hopefully seven minutes is enough. Barbed wire would be great, too, if we can muster some of that. There we go. We got some barbed wire here. And uh, as the briefing also said, we want to try to funnel the enemy into some kill zones. So if we can try to manage to lay out some barbed wire here, uh, there should be an easy way to do that. Uh, is it right-click? Ah, there we are. We, we right-click all the way. And then we can lock that in. So a lot of defense building in this game. If you've not seen it, there qu there is quite a bit of that, especially if you are playing multiplayer, both in Conquest and or just competitively. Um, there is another a Men of War coming out soon as well called Men of War 2. And that one I think is meant to be more arcadey and fun experience, more on par with Steel Division, which I think uh, Steel Division and Steel Division 2 is a lot based on timing with the decks being built at certain point you know you have points to consider and times when those units can be called out and so you know when you're building your deck and when you're in the heat of battle uh you could you know have all your best units come out towards the end of the battle and then clear and take the field again after losing a lot of territory and so uh yeah it's it's based on player skill and i think that game will be quite good for multiplayer uh, i think this game excels with its realism over that game it's got a a little bit more of it so if you're looking for more of a historical experience uh, and accuracy i think this is it and a lot more competitive like realistic multiplayer where a, a troop who has a mortar land next to them is going to be just vaporized as we're in men of war 2 it'll be a little bit more forgiving and more like an action movie and so i think both games are good i want to play both of them specifically for their campaigns because i do believe that this is something uh that i love to see from this game is uh, developers making more content which then allows modders to make more content in other words uh, with the developers bringing in things like these uh, more western european churches in fact i think this is modeled after one of the churches from the original game uh, bringing in all these buildings that are more french and possibly german industrial buildings you know the french and german having buildings that look a little bit more like this means that modders can make something that could be more 
uh, in Germany, you know, maybe a battle for, uh, I don't know, Berlin or something, alternative history uh, with the Americans, you know, they will be getting the American forces and they could do uh, something where, you know, the Americans are coming into Berlin, even if it were accurate, like closing in on Berlin and just sweeping up a little bit. I mean, these are all potential thing awesome things that can happen with mod makers uh, using assets from mods. And I've seen it time and time again, interestingly enough, in games like uh, both Euro Truck an American Truck Simulator, and even Farming Simulator. Anything with vehicles. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, this game primarily consists a lot of vehicles and, and placements and such. And so with more assets for the mod makers to use and modify, they can make even more content for us. So if you get this DLC, uh, then, you know, of course, it adds more onto that as well. Uh, regardless, um, remember, I was provided this key for free to be able to play it early, but it is something that I 100% would have purchased because I want the whole collection of what I've experienced in the past for Call to Arms. And that includes some of the more modern warfare stuff that I mentioned before, where I wish they would do more content for that. But I think really the bread and butter here is the World War II stuff. And so uh, I think it's now at a fair price. There's a Steam sale coming up too with the winter around the corner for Christmas and, and Thanksgiving and whatnot. If you purchase any of those at any time, I think, I think it's a great game. So if you've enjoyed, for example, Company of Heroes 2, and if you've enjoyed Company Heroes in the or three, I should say, because that's the newest one. But any of the other Company Heroes, then this will be a great one. We got seven minutes until the enemy approaches. I'm going to keep trying to build trenches. Interestingly enough, I think we're going to have more defenses and trenches than we will troops occupying them. Uh, but I'm going to try to like at least build some uh, box holes and whatnot, and see if we can build a few of those in the seven minutes that we remain. Uh, have remaining now the um interesting thing here too is that with that slower speed it gives us a lot more time to realistically give orders i think if we were to you know if this were an actual real battle uh clearly we we would you know be giving all of our troops and the troops their squad leaders orders and then they would be able to individually order their troops into every window and to occupy each gun so yeah it's a little more difficult to play this one on full speed and so that's why that uh for example, that first person, no, third person that I was telling you about. Look at that. I love it. That is beautiful. So imagine being a sniper, third person, you can, or an MG42 or a 30 cal or whatever. Yeah, you can actually take direct control of these troops. Remember, we're in slow motion, but we can throw grenades. We can uh, fire the rifle. And you can do the same with the tanks, too, where you drive them around and which ammunition types. It's really good. Very good. And it's something that we uh, certainly wanted to see in this game for a long time. Go ahead and uh, put that in there. Uh, it's something that we wanted to see in, uh, you know, Call to Arms brought in that feature. It's something we wanted in Meta War, and now it's here. All right, so now we will be seeing the American units for the first time, too. When the American units attack, we will be seeing American tanks and uh, things like Hellcats, Half-Tracks, Shermans. Maybe uh, we'll see airborne forces. I'm not sure who was involved on the American side at St. Lowe, but again... Anybody could mod it so that way the Soviets assaulted. I mean, who cares? I've seen people just do all sorts of cool, crazy stuff. And I encourage it because one of the things that we really need, especially in real-time strategy games, and especially those, like, for example, from this company, uh, for, for Men of War 2 and for uh, Call to Arms, I want to see all these games succeed. And I feel like, you know, these are like uh, comparing Call of Duty Modern Warfare back in the day to Black Ops, where it's like, uh, yeah, you know, you kind of want to play them all honestly they they certainly are a little different they all have different stories and they're they feel different have different quality but still if you're really into that you kind of just want to do everything there is all right so i think we're pretty good here on spreading out our troops and getting everybody onto emplacements we're continuously digging out these trenches now and i want to try to at least give the americans some uh something to look forward to which is our barbed wire and i'm going to try to put these between the hedgerows too where remember we were doing a lot of uh there we go. We were doing a lot of uh, warfare in narrow positions here in the hedgerows for the Americans and the Germans all throughout the Normandy campaign. And one of the missions actually uh, later on is the escape of the, I believe, is it the Felice pocket? Felice Navidad? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the Filet pocket or whatever it is. Uh, one of the end missions from Company Heroes is present here too, so it's very good. I don't have enough troops to get on all these guns. Some of these guys are literally crack shot uh, folk. Uh, Falsham Jaegers, and I don't really want to put them onto flax and things like that all alone. Uh, it looks like some of these AI troops are defending it, but I have to sacrifice my own men who are highly skilled and probably good with grenades and 
Panzer Foss and whatnot to be able to do that. So, hey, but that's that's just how it's going to be. We might have to literally leave some vehicles abandoned until later. Not everything has to have a soldier in it now. We could literally leave troops behind and then eventually bring up the half track. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and hide this right here behind the corner. I don't think the Americans will fire at it, but it is good to probably hide a lot of this stuff. And we do have, what, a 37 millimeter? Yeah, 3.7 centimeter Flak 37 that's aiming right down the road. And uh, so we're going to have to definitely put some troops on that because that's just perfectly aimed right down the road. Now, if we micromanage all of our troops, we should be able to remember where Panzerfoss are, Panzerschrecks, uh, MG42s. You know, if they need to occupy a Flak 37 to be able to destroy a bunch of enemy infantry and then bail off the gun to destroy a tank, that's just something we're going to have to do. So you know, good, good luck to us in that. Mortar ready to go. What is pointing away over here? Is there a machine down there? Oh, I think it's that ammunition thing there, yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, it looks like everything's good to go. I'm trying to uh, now just basically buy as much time as I can with the delay to give every one of our engineers time to dig everything in. We do have another soldier here. Another uh, pioneer, I suppose. Pioneers here! Yo, if you watch this far in the video, too, by the way, don't forget to leave a like so more people can find these damn RTSs. I, sub to the channel if you want. Don't subs, unsub, whatever. But just leave a like so people can find this content on a call to arms, meta, uh, well, call to arms, gates of hell, Ostfront, liberation, and more importantly, find other uh, talented uh, both mod makers who upload their stuff out there and other YouTubers creators who cover it as well so hopefully if this popped into your algorithm or whatnot hopefully it does more in the future and yeah if you don't you know if this video is okay and you find someone else that you fall in love with good and i did my job of at least promoting games that i'm very passionate about going all the way back to the days of literally the original men of war and then playing men of war assault squad and men of war assault squad 2 uh, i don't care who makes these types of games i just want to see them continue on for years and years and so that way people can continuously enjoy these with higher Graphics, better connections. I mean, a lot of people ask me to go back and play Metal War Assault Squad 2. I'm sorry, friend. That game is just too obsolete now. I, I, I love it. It is fantastic. It is a wonderful game. And it is very poorly optimized for today. And uh, we've fought battles where if you do a 30-minute online battle, so many frames are dropped and have to be, like, sync up where the game pauses briefly that it could cost you an hour to play a 30-minute match. I mean, imagine that. Every other second is just basically nothing. Like, it's like mailing chess moves in prison or something like that to each other. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's purgatory. It's a good game. Meta War is certainly awesome. The Meta War community is incredible. There's no doubting that. A lot of those mod makers are still around and still pumping out stuff like Gangsta and Rob. And uh, some of those things have survived from, like, uh, Viga and everyone else, too, who have made wonderful, detailed campaigns. And so hats off to them. And they've even put me and other creators in their mods too because, yeah, it's, it's a partnership, you know. They make the mods, we play them, we promote them, and it makes their hard work worth it. And uh, unfortunately, that's something that like, we lose with games like City Skylines 2 where it's not going to be on the Steam Workshop anymore and just through Paradox's service, and so thus they have control. But the control should be with you guys. All right, I'm going to get off my high horse now and... Uh, hold down as we get ready for this. I think we are actually ready. I'm going to go ahead and let some of these guys finish off whatever they were building. Maybe I'll, uh, Do we have any sort of mines? If we have mines, uh, I should definitely place those, but I don't... Oh, wait a minute. This could be... Hold on. Wait a minute. This video could be two and a half hours if I find mines inside of those uh, boxes there because a, um, yeah, a, a, a minefield in front of the enemy is going to be beautiful. I'm going to put a MG42 here to try to shoot across the road. I don't expect the Americans to come down the road except for vehicles, and if their uh, vehicles are destroyed, then the crews could bail out. I also noticed that only one of these um, hedgehogs has been made, although I think some of these troops only carry enough material to build one. Uh, this guy, unfortunately, got to stay here, pal, and start building these. Can he actually do that? This is a really good place to ambush the enemy, by the way, because this is a, not a wall, but like a, a retaining wall. Like, it's not something that tanks can drive over or troops can climb up. Uh, it's literally, you know, like a cliff. So they can't really climb up that. So that's good for us. And that means if they come down this way, it's going to be a bad time for them. I'm not exactly sure where we can put this. Love this, too, by the way. When you select a unit, it'll tell you their efficiency. And so units will become higher and lower in efficiency based on how many crew members are in that vehicle or on that um you know, on that gun or whatnot, and what their skill may be with that. And you can even see the number of kills and um, 
you know, how many vehicles that they've destroyed, depending on what it is. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and build vehicle sandbags. Is that a thing? This is vehicle sandbags. Am I putting that in front? What am I? Not sure how to equip this. They may have done that. Anyway, a sneaky snake position to be in. I could always put sandbags in front of them, too, with the engineering. But we'll see. Let's check back on that in a second. All right, more hedgehogs being placed down. Um, go ahead and place another one here. And uh, yeah, barbed wire everywhere. Honestly, if the enemy attacks us with mortars or just any sort of like artillery, this barbed wire is basically good. But we can try to build a little bit of a weird zigzag pattern through the orchards. That way we can see where the enemy may approach from. I'm going to try to make our defenses more around the church. I do want to advance them to the west, but unfortunately we just don't have enough time. I'm keeping sanitators around, the medics around, to try to uh, give any sort of health to any units that perish. Oh, it looks like there's a Kubel wagon there, Schwimmwagen in there. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to heal our AI soldiers from there, but uh, they become wounded and they're under the computer control or AI control, then we can deal with them right away hopefully try to heal people unfortunately a lot of the problems in this game too is that oh look at that coastal gun emplacement damn do we get to build freaking normandy in this game hold on that's amazing that's different coastal gun emplacement that must be incredibly expensive but that could be anything from like a huge bunker to maybe just a small trench for, for a gun or even uh, maybe a pillbox or whatnot i mean it shows a cannon but it says gun emplacement and that's uh, but yeah, I can't wait until you hear some of the American voice acting. I totally forgot where I was. I got excited by that uh, thing, but um, yeah, whatever. I am excited to see all these defenses be tested by the enemy's attack. We really have nothing in terms of troops, do we? Uh, there's a whole list of our soldiers on this side, and a lot of them are already in position around the church. Um, yeah, wow. I we we really don't have anything. We don't. I I, I I'm not gonna lie. This is not a good situation. Uh, we do have a few good things, like 20 millimeters, 37 centimeter, or, yeah, that'd be great, 37 centimeter would be wonderful, but uh, 37 millimeter is, uh, ah, it's good, pointed down the road, ah, the sandbags did go up, fantastic. I think uh, we can actually build concealment for some of these units, too, where the Americans won't be able to see them. I think you can put snipers, uh, snipers will be able to put down cover where there might not be. So if the uh, battle gets, you know, if, if everything ends up being like World War One, if you're fighting against somebody in multiplayer, you can actually grow like a little bush in the middle of the field, like a fake little bush or something. They did all sorts of stuff like that in World War One, fake trees and whatnot. Take take a look; it's incredible what they did in World War One. But uh, yeah, you can plant a bush and then hide in it. The enemy might not be able to see you doing any of that shenanigans. No hiding. Now uh, I wonder if we did have a sniper. I did want to put him up in the bell tower. But uh, maybe I was mistaken on that. I don't see a sharpshooter here. And if there is one, it might be better for him to just stay outside. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a way to easily occupy a bell tower, though. Let's see if they go. They can go inside the church. This certainly feels like, uh, uh, you know, like maybe a little bit like Hell Let Loose. Just in RTS mode. I, I feel like whenever I play Hell Let Loose, it channels a little bit more of Cult Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostrand for me because we can build so many things in this game that you can build in that game. And it's really cool how, especially in Gates of Hell, you can, uh, and in Hell Let Loose, you can win a war by literally doing no shooting at all. Um, now, obviously, here your soldiers have to do the shooting, and you're not doing any unless you take first-person control. But an interesting thing to think about is uh, the battle can be won or lost just by how you set up defenses, things like mines and whatnot. Speaking of mines, I forgot. We need to get a guy down there to check out those mines. Uh, but our engineers are very quickly building defenses. And I think anybody can place mines, so better for them to be building these. Go ahead and make sure they don't try to flank us on this road here. It looks like there's a nice little spot for them to flank the church, and I don't want that to happen. Can I? Okay, I can build that. And then we can try to build some more. Uh, any sort of barbed wire remaining? Yeah, and another thing, too, is I think it's rather fair because our troops do get a limited amount of uh, barbed wire and whatnot, too, even when we have multiple soldiers. So this seems to be balanced around multiplayer, too, which is fantastic. Is he building that trench? He is. Okay. And let's see if we have mines. Should have checked this first. Any sort of 
briefing with a bunch of soldiers standing around usually is an indication of, wow, that's interesting. We have a, it looks to be a, uh, oh, MG-26. Is that Danish from World War One? Facial splinter mask. That's interesting. That's for like a sniper. Barrel shotgun. The hell? I think the Germans just grabbed whatever they could. I guess we don't have mines, but we do have tons of barbed wire remaining. And more 7.92 belt fed ammo, which is perfect for the uh, MG42s. Another thing is, too, it's really important in this game to remember what vehicles have what ammunition because it does matter in this game. You can't just steal, quote, ammo from a soldier or a vehicle and use it uh, if a, uh, let's say, a Tiger gets destroyed and you know that it has an MG42 on the top of it or an MG34 inside of the uh, tank itself, then you know you should be able to go there and grab that ammo and then put that into, um, you know, a, a different type of uh, gun. You know, you can put it inside of an MG34 and fire on the enemy that way. All right, well, I tried to get in the church there. It looks like all they do is just kind of stand inside. I was hoping he would be able to get in the bell tower. There might be a way to do that, but still it seems like soldiers, one, can't shoot out the windows, and two, aren't able to climb up into the bell towers. But yeah, that this really reminds me of everybody building like a command post or whatever, pretty much every game. I hope we see some of these missions also mimicking... Uh, I really hope that with this Liberation DLC coming out, that all the mod makers make a Company of Heroes uh, mod where it just features all the original missions from Company of Heroes, but in this game. Uh, and just the maps could be similar, but of course, different gameplay. And that would be, it would feel like a fever dream. Like you misremembered it or like a dream come true. All right, this tank's kind of in the middle of nowhere. I don't really know where to place this one where it could be effective. Um, we do have a, like a flak 37 there, a flak 20 over here. Uh, but I don't know. We should go down this road. Go ahead and get it moving. All right, no more slow speed for us. We're going to go ahead and just go into normal speed now and hope everybody is able to uh, do what they can and finish off all those defenses. We'll give the Americans a little bit of a chance here. I think we're playing on uh, normal difficulty, but of course you can play with Fog of War on, on the hardest difficulty, which I recommend doing only after your first playthrough. I think your first one should be, no matter what your skill level is, uh, put it on an easier difficulty for you so you can learn... Uh, the nuances of the mission, and go right in and make it harder and harder. Uh, the first time you play it on the hardest, you might end up just save scumming all the time and just wanting to get through. At least that's my advice. But if you're a pro, go for it. Don't listen to me. All right, let's go ahead and keep building some small trenches. Uh, no, maybe more foxholes. We got two minutes. Have any? Wait, ooh. Oh, medical rally point. Okay, I was hoping we got some sort of a pillbox or something. Now, my defense is also banking on the fact that uh, I'm betting that we will get reinforcements, which would be nice. And I really hope that we get, um, you know, the enemy to attack and then we finally get some sort of a, uh, maybe like a, a reprieve where we get reinforcements either from the east down this road here or perhaps from the south where we saw some of those other units approaching. So... Okay, barbed wire is being built. I really think we're in the best position possible. I think we've spread out a lot of our troops. We have MGs. These guys will pull out their rifles on their approaches. MG42 on this side. We have additional ammo for him. We got 300, 400 rounds, 500 rounds. I think we can grab some more. 500 rounds is a lot, though. Now, maybe we could sneak this uh, vehicle here. Trying to make a real tight right turn. And I'm just going to try to peek this out. Now, this is great. We've got this, like, wall here, this earthen wall. So this essentially is, like, impassable. Unless the Americans have some sort of hedgerow cutters, which is a thing. And there's that great Company Heroes mission like that's like that as well, where you get to build your engineering tanks and flamethrowers and cut through all that stuff. So we'll see if the Americans bring bulldozers or something. Go ahead and do something crazy here. We got one minute. I'm going to go ahead and put some barbed wire down between these. Try to cut off their forces. Really trying to confuse the AI pathing like you would try to confuse soldiers too. That they got stuck in that barbed wire. It's a maze of razor. That's a bad time. Engineer over here with that trench. Going to want to try to... Put some barbed wire there. 
anything to slow the Americans down. If we cannot put troops here to shoot back at them, we can at least try to get them to see the barbed wire and go elsewhere to where we've got an MG or a flak waiting, which is good. So we got our flak here. We've got a flak here, and then we've got the flak of the church, and then the pack 40 at the very backside. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to see if that actually holds. All right, so we got seven seconds remaining. Our first look at the American forces in Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostfront, Liberation, new DLC coming out this week. Let's see what we got. Fortified defensive line at St. George's. Hold back the Americans and prevent them from breaching the road. Well, we have already got an American there. Kind of just standing there. Oh, they've got some trench lines. I think we might be ordered to counterattack. And they're artillerying us. That. Oh, well. So much for that guy. Sanitator. They're already artillerying the road. That sucks. The map has opened up a little bit. We've got some breathing room now. that medic to get that uh, engineer back on his feet. Let's keep building some small trenches here and there. Actually, that's a small, that's a trench there. Oh, did I build multiple ones in front of each other? Can they be dragged like that? Oh, sometimes you can drag something and like put it like a dotted line, but that's okay. All right, so we have extra time. The Americans are doing their artillery bombardment, so... You okay? Enemy has dug out positions in the northern slope. Stand your ground and get ready to harass the enemy on the corner of every hedgerow. Great, they've dug in. What's that? Oh, AI. All right, great. Let's see if we can also maybe put a trench in the road. Would that be interesting? actually dig out the streets that seems really desperate a like berlin level all right the american forces here they come let's go all right looking good boys good details on the model of the sway and the guns rain effects too it's starting to rain nice good weather effects here oh you can hear some grumbling from the grunts oh we have some uh rifle grenades too that accurate where a guy would carry a rifle grenade launcher and a regular rifle i thought there was an attachment for that well whatever if we kill him we can actually capture that uh grenade launcher and we could use that against him squad leader usagf ground forces m1a1 thompson oh our troops hear them mg42 opening up listen to that and americans are wow holy hell Wow, flat guns just ripping them to pay. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can hear BARs firing back. Oh my god, that is that is horrific. I think there's some trenches here too. Maybe old abandoned German positions as they fell back. Uh, I feel bad for them. That is that is horrible. Uh we could get on this. Oh, uh, yeah, we grabbed... Uh, oh, you know what? I was going to grab ammo for this guy, but... Get it. Get that guy in the uh, half-track. How much ammo does this MG have? About a thousand rounds. 40 here. Going to need to... Uh, MG42 will need a little bit more ammo there. All right, let's get the half-track to go over this way. Going to try to... Uh, Try to face it this way to the north. All right. The goal now is to probably finish off a few American stragglers. But, uh, wow. Was this thing able to fire too? Damn. Uh, let's see. Did anybody get any kills here? MG was able to kill 13 units. Damn. First squads are probably the scouts. Yep. No kidding. Got AI just walking out in the middle of nowhere. All right, my man, you're going to have to drive. Oh, a quick save. All right. Well, an auto save. We'll see what that means. Can we actually go through there? Oh, we can't go through there either. 
Oh wow, so we could we could actually put our half track there if he can path towards it. Uh oh. An M8 Greyhound now coming up the road. Panzer uh, boss will be useful there. That doesn't need that many rifle rounds. That guy has some ammo. All right, I'm holding Victor. If we see anybody indicated in yellow or gold, that means we've got a soldier who's down or dead. And anybody in red is a allied soldier. These guys here are under AI control, not that guy, though. Oh, beautiful flank with the half-track. Trying that M8 right there. American half-tracks. We've got uh, M3A1s pushing up, M8 Greyhounds pushing up, and we have an M4. An M4 Sherman, our first uh, Sherman. Look at that. Wow, that's a Detroit diesel. He's pretty and gritty. Look at that. Oh, and listen to the American voice acting from the uh, vehicle itself. Nice. And from the troops around it. Oh, yep, they're indicating that there's a cannon. Enemy tank. Enemy tank. We don't have to any, any tanks. They're probably referring to the half track. Whoa, and that mortar firing real close by. Ooh, good mortar hits. That's a uh, 12 centimeter. All right, that tank is really our only serious threat at the moment. Let's get that MG gunner some more ammo and check in with him. Hans, Hans has ammo for you, Hans. There you go, Hans. All right, thanks, Hans. Guy's got a ton more ammo now. Good spot to be. The Americans are firing at something. We could have a soldier with a Panzer Foss somewhere nearby. There we are. We also have AT grenades. Put this guy in here. Can we not run up through there? Yeah, go that way. Great sounds on those MG42s. That sounds like it was, um, I don't know if it sounded that good in the regular call to arms. Sounds like it was re-recorded. I think there's also free updates and such too for this game where the developers will add units and maps and sounds and updates to models and things like that to make the game better. So, you know, they're just as passionate about making the game good and people liking it. Good thing. I see no progress of the Americans anywhere. Oh, there's actually a mortar team there. Fun. That's just a totally unprotected American mortar team. All right. Go ahead and give them the bad news. Oh shit! Grenade. Took this one. Love how the Americans reacted to that. Now it's hell let loose. Airburst. Oh, damn. Nice. Get wrecked. Okay, if we get another soldier over here, we can actually capture that mortar. Now with it, bring the medic. Damn the torpedoes. Uh, ooh. Is that the same Sherman? It is. Got a little uh, curious. Oh, you know what that means, y'all. Hmm? You're about to see the... Uh... Yep. You're about to see fun. Oh, it's behind that damn hedgerow. Oh, this is going to be so sad and so bad. Get the mortar. Let's get this tank. Oh, Fita saying, look at the turret turning towards me. Oh, beautiful hit. That tank is knocked out. Look at that. The turret is just worthless. Whoa, we got a lot of tanks over here, though. Bad times. M4s are pushing up on the left side now with the Pac-40. in those trenches. Where the hell's that medic and the uh... 
I don't know where our medic operation was now. I've lost track of it on the map. Here it is. Uh, forget the mortar. We need to fall back. I, I don't need that now. I don't want to play with you anymore. Now let's just fall back. We'll keep those guys in cover. American tank pushed up again. Wait, is that the same one from before? He's back with a vengeance. He's pulled up. Well, he still has that hull machine gun. He's still in the fight. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. AT grenade from the Germans. M4 is cooking off. Smells like bacon, baby. Brew American bacon. All that ammunition and oil and fuel. How lovely. Half track there is causing some trouble. Wow, and the uh, Pac-40 just got wrecked. But to be fair to the Pac-40, it did take a ton of hits from the uh, enemy tanks there. Get the medic up there. Pac-40. Firing an uh, AP, what is it, AP BC round? Ooh. APC BC. All right, so we're healing these guys up. Gonna have to get them out of combat. I think with that position's overwhelmed. Oh, wow, we actually stopped a half track here as well. Another M8 Greyhound firing there. This left flank is going to fold and I kind of felt like it would based on the fact that there was very little defense out here except for that Pac-40 and I, oof, and I was not, um, Gonna base all my defense on that, unfortunate. Oh, and look at all those Panzerfoss. Oh no, they were probably in like the uh, box there or something. Ugh. Well, we'll let the mortar fire off on the infantry. The tanks could get stuck and never move forward. We should be all right. Now, let's see. Well, we need to find some more Panzerfoss. I don't know if they'll just be in random boxes. I feel like it's um, a little unfair to the player to just hide things in a random box without indicating it. But typically, it is around the starting cutscene area, which is why we looked in those boxes. We do have TNT, but the uh, throwing radius on that is garbage. Oh, wow, another MG42. Hello. Wow, and P oh, MP41s. I thought it was PPSHs from the eastern front. Uh, let's go ahead and put this away. Put those in there. Let's get you to take some more MG42 ammo, and you are now a machine gunner. Put a machine gun there. All right, for these engineers, do they have any sort of explosives? Man, that would be cool if they did. Use explosives. Well, they got to get close to the vehicle and, like, set them. Oh, look at that. Watch left side! Guy hanging off the back there. Should hit him with an AP grenade. Here, let's make some schnitzel. Or it's slowly turning. Ha! Got him. Ooh, vehicle's pissed. Oh, one of the uh, Shermans destroyed there. Could be Panzerfoss from friendly troops. Our a medic. Left flank's kind of folding a little too much. Hold on. So yeah, remember these artillerymen from before. They really don't have any sort of uh, anything on them. It's just a rifle. Maybe a grenade. And some bandages. That's about it. Get him away from the front. Run, just run. Okay, come this way. Try to plug those holes still. Medic and... Now, the great thing is, is this vehicle will be able to fire down this road, too. So if the Americans peek out this way or down the road, we've got them either way. Now we got them.
going to be quite difficult to stop those tanks, honestly. They've uh, kind of overrun our position with the um, Panzerfoss over here. I wish the um, damn AI would be under my control so I could do the most to, like, you know, one, once Havoc starts unfolding before us, we can actually... Uh, oh, next American Assault in five minutes. Are they giving up? MG is still in a good position. We got Panzerfoss ready to go. And we got men down. It's too close to the uh, American vehicles to do anything about it. Can I build a trend? No, no, no. There's too many Americans. Too many Yankee Doodles. Um, take cover on that fence if we can. Oh, no. That vehicle could only do so much. But it held that M8 Greyhound and that half-track. Actually, both of those guys off. All right, let's get the half-track facing this way. God, this sucks. I've got, like, just medics under my control. Medics and engineers. Gotta, gotta get a medic up there. So, uh, you know, when in these smaller engagements, I try to be a little bit more protective of my troops. Try to give them a little bit more individual care and try to make sure everyone's in a good position. Every once in a while, we have to do a risk to, uh, you know, save the whole unit. Have somebody run out in automatic fire in order to try to stop a tank or something. Yeah, this trench is just completely EED. Like, I can get a good grenade kill there. I just need those troops to be closer. MG Gunner is somehow still alive. The amount of tanks that we're against and uh, half-tracks and, like, M8s and stuff, it's just ridiculous. I don't think... Is there... There seems to be a way through there. Good luck. Get him out of there. Well, we've certainly got a few tank kills, one there and a few over by that Pack 40. I do believe if we fortified the Pack 40 a little bit more, we still would have had a breakthrough kind of around this area where the Pack 40 can't cover. And this is exactly where those M8s and um, the Greyhounds and the uh, half tracks like just bopped right through. Oh, God. All right, we're going to camp the corner. I think this is, uh, I mean, the Battle of St. Lowe eventually fell to the Americans, so I don't know if they're going to give up after 40 seconds, and then later it'll go into a cutscene that says, yep, and then the Americans won, or whatever. But if we can hold for another 30 seconds, we're good. Try to get our church, uh, troops in the church. Oh, idiots, where are you going? I was imagining them running through here. I think here's weird, but my god, they made it. Can I build a trench inside the church? That'd be hilarious, but no. Over the door, oh god. Saving in progress. Oh, they just hit me up with another wave. Our enemy artillery ceased. I suspect they'll use spotters to pinpoint some of our... Oh, 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 oh it would have been over anyway. They're using spotters to literally pinpoint anything that was of importance. So They're intensifying their assault in the west. Yeah, well, uh, no kidding. Yeah, so even with that pack 40 there, they would have hit it with artillery and then have broken through. Wow, and they just destroyed the church. Enemy aircraft inbound. What do we got? F-18s, brother? F-15s? F-14s? F-4s? Well, it's got to be like a P-51, right? Where are the Mustangs? 
Actually, P-47s would be sweet to see. I don't, I don't see them, though. Or hear them. Oh, come on. Now they're coming in from the, the uh, flank over here. He didn't get around this, did he? Oh, wow. He's dead. Damn it. We'll just hang out in the church. The Americans have so many light vehicles that are just on the prowl that it's like hopeless. I mean, this is this is supposed to be unwinnable. Uh, unless we had some crazy amount of AT mines, which I've missed. It, it would be possible to defend against that because one AT mine would blow off a, a wheel on the Batmobile and Joker would get away. But uh, luckily in this case, for them, you know, we didn't have really anything other than Panzerfaust. And I don't even think we would have had enough Panzerfaust to destroy all these vehicles. Like, even if we scored a hit each and every time, and destroy them. Yeah. Wow, look at all the vehicles there. So what does this mean? Like, what what are they going to do now? I mean, they're they're parked around the church. We're just we're just hanging out with Jesus now. Oh, that's my purse. I don't know you. There we go. Oh, wow, medic scored a kill. Oh no, that was a um, a tank driver. He shooting out the window? Oh, they can shoot out the window. I don't trust it though. Well, we got a medic in here so we can stay alive. All right, so we can cling to life. Oh wait, wait. This is a preparation phase. Oh no way. Wait a minute. That means that. This isn't even the enemy's assault yet. They're going to... Wait, what if I do this now? I mean, I have no other troops to call in. Oh, great. Brad Pitt and his friends are coming in the tank. I think that, was that a jumbo? I can't remember. What was the tank from Fury? Anyone remember? It wasn't a jumbo. No, no, no. It was a... Easy 8, right? Like this? No, what, what the hell was it? Oh. Alright, let's keep everybody away from the door. Now, if only I'd gotten a machine gunner in the church, that would have been our only hope. What's going on with this, by the way? There's just random Germans in the back. Like, where, where the hell? Just standing around. Like, everyone should... Wait, is this guy an AT... Bro, the Luftwaffe is here. Obviously, Pan... You know. Balsam Jaeger, I know. But, uh, like, man, I wish I would have had control of these guys. This guy's got a Panzerfaust. That would have been so useful! It wasn't dumb AI. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, I think the Americans are just going to get another handful of infantry and tanks, and that's it. You're doing an excellent job in containing the enemy, but we're struggling to keep up with this massive assault. Oh, no, I don't think we're struggling. I think it's going just fine. I mean... Objective completed. Hold them back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We stopped them dead right there. Now that the enemy is giving us some breathing space. Oh, yeah. I'm ordering you to fall back to our HQ on the other side of the valley. Motorized Kampf Group should arrive to strengthen our lines there. Oh, a second part of the mission. Well. Ah, so we're probably going to counterattack then. Uh, well, we're going to keep our troops right here to keep the Americans pinned down right where we want them. That's right. Warning issued about U.S. troops close to HQ. Zero out of three. Fall back and wait for reinforcements. Well, I guess we will end today's episode here, and we will battle it out in the next episode for St. Lo. Thank you very much for leaving a like and subscribing and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the preparation phase of just defending the road. Now, we seemingly are going to be bringing the tanks and the pain to the enemy. Want to see more? You know what to do. See you next time.